Although I've been blind from birth, I've always been encouraged to participate in sport. It's a big thing in our family. We all enjoy sport. The condition I have is a hereditary one, so again, it affects my whole family. When I was younger, I had more sight than I do now, and I used to go and play football and cricket with my two brothers in the back garden and the only reason they would let me join in was the fact that I could see the ball for them when they would lose it. One of the reasons I became involved in athletics when I was little was finding my mum's old running spikes in the back of her wardrobe. I obviously saw my mum as a big role model and wanted to be like her so knowing that she had done athletics when she was younger made me want to do the same. I took a break from athletics when I was 17 and went off to university to study physiotherapy and it was while I was at university that I realised just how much I missed sport. I missed competing and especially missed the feeling of winning. When it got announced in 2005 that London would be hosting the Olympic and Paralympic Games in 2012, I began to dream that I would be a part of it somehow and when I got involved in cycling it became a real possibility. I began to dream of winning a gold medal in front of my friends and family and all the home crowd that would be there to cheer me on and this became my focus in training in the run into the games. Unfortunately a medal in London wasn't meant to be I got two fourth places in the velodrome and then was leading in the road time trial when disaster struck and the chain on my bike jammed, causing me to lose a lot of time, resulting in me finishing seventh. I was devastated. After London 2012, I felt like I'd let my friends and family down and I never wanted to get on a bike again. I decided to give myself a year to see whether I could enjoy riding a bike again and it was becoming world champion in 2013 that really rekindled my love for the sport. It was at this point I realised that failing at the first attempt was not something to be ashamed of and that I could still be a Paralympic champion. There will be just two laps to go for Laura Turnham and Corinne Hall, the pilot of this tandem. And the lead is getting bigger and bigger with every passing lap. It's nearly two seconds now. They just need to stay upright. They just need to keep pedalling and stay on the track. The day I raced the pursuit in Rio is a blur. It was like I was in a bubble. 250 metres to go, 250 metres to glory for Laura Turnham and Corinne Hall. There's no way New Zealand are going to come back from this now. Down the back straight, into the banking away to our left. Here they come, into the finishing straight, up towards the line. It's about 3.28.050. Doesn't matter what the time is, because they've won the gold medal. They've beaten New Zealand. It's gold for Great Britain. Becoming Paralympic champion was a dream come true. It made all the blood, sweat and tears shed worthwhile. I am now focused on defending my Paralympic title in Tokyo 2020, but I do realise that cycling isn't forever. I have chosen to study nutrition with Future Fit Training to not only help me personally, but to give me the option to help others in the future. My story has taught me that it is okay to fail, but it is not okay to give up. I'd love to inspire others to step out of the comfort zone and to dream big. Mm -hmm.